What's up guys, finally have some time to get out here in the garage and today I want to work on the Triumph. Uh, so what we're gonna try to do is actually put the motor back in the frame um, so that I can start to figure out my um, motor mounts on the back uh, because obviously the factory ones aren't gonna work anymore so we're gonna have to uh, figure that out. plan for today mainly going to be put this motor back in the frame it's probably going to be a pain um, if I remember correctly from pulling it out ideally I'd put this down on the ground on top of like a blanket and kind of lay it in I'll probably do that for the final um, installation just so that I don't like scratch up my freshly painted frame but obviously we're not to that point yet so I'm just going to try and wrestle it in there uh, really what I'm trying to figure out is I have these plates So there's this one and then this one So this is the left side of the bike um, because this little stud right here is uh, for the rear brake uh, So that I can still use my factory uh, foot pegs and brake pedal and uh, and all that kind of stuff so that mounts onto the motor on that side and then this mounts onto the motor on this side. Uh, these little holes right here are for the foot peg. These mount up to the motor itself. And then this hole, 99% sure here because I actually haven't had this in place yet, um, is going to be right about where we mount through this. So this was like a solid um, where the swing arm mounted. And that also acted as... Um, you know the place where the end of the factory motor mounts um, Connected so we're gonna try to use that these are actually designed for a pre like 1970 or 71 uh, Basically the before they went to the oil and frame models. That's what these are really designed for So we're probably gonna have to do some custom fab here uh, To make them work, which is exactly why I want to do it right now because I'm again trying to get all the custom fabrication work done then we can work on making everything pretty and uh, and putting it all back together. Um, so yeah, let's uh, see if we can't wrestle that uh, big ass engine back into the frame. How about that? Motor went back in uh, way easier than it came out. Um, so we got just basically this two motor mounts. Really there's four total. So there's this bar that goes across, little spacer and a bolt that goes right through here. A main one right in the front. The huge one down here at the bottom. I didn't put the spacers in because there's no reason to have to fiddle with those right now. Um, so those are the three. My gut tells me that that would be enough, but I'm sure the Triumph engineers know a whole hell of a lot more than I do. And they put four, so we're gonna see if we can't get four out of it. So these are the plates now. I'm gonna kinda mess with, maybe throw some bolts in and kind of uh, try to get a feel for exactly where we're at what we might be able to modify, what we're gonna have to do to, uh, to make these work. This 
just gives you an idea of uh, what I've been talking about. So have the plates bolted up here right to the back of the motor. So they have two bolts that bolt to the engine. Then they allow you to bolt on the factory foot peg. And then I think the idea was that this hole would be kind of lined up with this. But I don't know if you can tell. Uh, they are way off. So don't think that that mount is going to work. But here's what I'm thinking. We have a really solid mount on the top. We have a through bolt with two mounts on each side, really solid in the front. We have the big, thick, nice center mounted mount on the, in the middle on the bottom. So I'm thinking this is really kind of almost redundant to me as far as mounts go. And I have this open hole down here at the bottom of the plate. So what I think I'm gonna do is just fabricate like a nice thick tab um, weld it right here on top of the frame rail so the weight will be directly in the middle of this tube um, and then have it just bolt right through this bottom bolt okay, that'll be really clean and then I can actually chop this whole thing off um, and have that be nice and clean as well get rid of that or maybe use that for uh, something else I don't know what I would use that for so probably chop it off um, and then I'd have a nice solid mount right here at the bottom so the weight's nice and on it. You know, nice clean welds. It'll be kind of hidden underneath. You won't really be able to see it. Um, I think it could look really, really clean that way. And it'll obviously work, um, you know, the same way on this side as well. So I think that's the route I'm going to go. And that'll give us one, two, three three, four, five mounts uh, for the engine total, um, which is gonna be plenty. Um, and if it's not, then uh, you know we'll find out, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty damn confident that that's gonna be enough. And that'll be really nice and clean and, and keep this middle area nice and open like I wanted it to. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get to work on those mounts and see what we can figure out. I'm also gonna go ahead and jump on the bike and since I have the seat and everything mounted, um, and this also gives you guys an idea and me an idea of what it's going to look like. I mean, basically the only piece we're really missing is the exhaust. And that's basically what it's going to look like down on the ground. I still think I'm going to need to lower the front end a little bit, even with the weight of the engine. That front really didn't drop very much. And I think it's just got a little bit too much of a, like a positive rake. Um, and I'd like it to be just, just, I mean where the bottom of the tank is just perfectly level. Um, so, I mean, we're talking maybe half an inch uh, sliding down on the forks. But anyway, getting off topic, rambling like I always do. So we're going to uh, jump on the bike and see how those foot peg positions work and see if I'm going to need to modify those at all and then uh, get to work fabricating that bottom uh, motor mount. <laughs> So here's the little mounts I made up. They're just, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm currently making them up. Uh, just a little one and a half inch piece of uh, the same thickness as these mounting plates. <clears throat> Let me try that again. Same thickness as these mounting plates. So it'll go in just like this. And I know it's probably a little hard to see, but um, basically I'm gonna weld this to the bottom right there and then where I have that Sharpie mark is uh, where I'm going to drill a hole for the bolt to go through. So it'll be, and then of course, once I have the hole drilled, I'm going to like clean these up and make them look a little bit nicer. But basically it'll be just like that, but on the back side. So it'll be pretty clean, plenty strong. So I'm going to get to drilling the holes through and then uh, we'll kind of test fit them up with a bolt through it, make sure everything is good. Then, uh, clean them up, make them look a little bit nicer and weld them onto the frame.
we are ready to uh, tack the mounts into place. So went ahead and tightened up the bolts on the engine to make sure it's nice and snug. Put a bolt through the mount itself and you can see where it kind of lines up with the frame right there. Do the exact same thing on the other side. So that's all nice and tight. I double checked all the spacers for the mounts to make sure they all fit. Make sure the top mount lines up so the motor is in the right spot. I took a long straight edge and ran it straight down the sprockets. You can see that those, well, I don't know if you can see or not, but they are very, very close to being lined up. Um, so we're gonna be good with our spacing like we were worried about a little bit um, with the wheel in the center and the, you know, the rear fender and everything centered. Um, that looks like it's all lining up really nice. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and bust the welder out and um, throw on some really heavy tacks. I might just throw a bead all the way across um, just so that it's nice and secure. And again, we still have a ton of finish welding to do. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some welds on there and then we'll go from there. Well, my uh, welder had other plans. So I got this tiny little tack weld on here and then realized that I am completely out of welding wire. Well, since I'm out of uh, welding wire, we're going to uh, call that a good stopping point um, for now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm not sure how long it ended up being. Uh, hopefully a decent length because I know it's been a little while since I put out a Triumph video. So we got the motor put back in. We got the new mounts kind of figured out. Obviously need to be finish welded. Um, but yeah, we're really making some progress. You can really see what this bike is going to look like with the engine in it. And I'm getting more and more excited every time we work on this of, uh, of how it's turning out. It's literally exactly how I envisioned it looking, uh, which is really, really awesome. And it's going to be uh, super badass when it's done. So uh, make sure to like and subscribe on the video. Check out my website, classicoctane.com for shirts. Again, huge thank you to everybody who has uh, helped support so far. Um, I'm going to uh, do a little bit of work on the Mustang later today and tomorrow. Uh, so that video will be out uh, probably early next week. Um, now that we have the motor back in, I can really start to figure out a lot of the um, kind of remaining pieces of the puzzle. Uh, again, I am going to pull that motor back out um, to finish weld everything, but I needed the motor in to do the motor mounts and then also uh, check our alignment with the chain. Um, I'm going to probably put the new chain on. I have it sitting right over here, a little bit longer than a stock chain uh, to compensate for the stretch in the frame. I'm probably going to throw that chain on so that I can see if we need to make a custom uh, chain tensioner for it. It may or may not need it. Um, which is why we're going to have to throw it on and test it. Uh, that'll also make sure we get our alignment perfect. Um, then next fabrication project is going to be uh, the electronics tray. So i got to figure out um, where I'm going to route my exhaust so that I can figure out where I want to put my electronics um, so obviously they don't get too hot. I'd really love to keep this as clean as possible. So I talked about in a, an earlier video that I might make a small battery box, electronics tray, whatever you want to call it. That kind of fits in right here. That's a decent idea. Um, I may try to put it under the bike. I may try to hide it somewhere else. Um, so let me let me know in the comments, actually. That would be a great idea. If you guys could help me figure out what do you think would look good, um, where can I hide the electronics. I only have that small anti-gravity battery, um, the electronic ignition box, um, you know, the Moto Gadget M unit. So they're all pretty small things. So it doesn't need to be a huge box. Um, I also thought about, just as I continue to ramble here, a lot of the earlier Triumphs, uh, you know, before they had the oil in the frame, they had uh, external oil tanks. I thought about getting an oil tank and actually having it house my electronics. So it would look like an oil tank. It could even have, you know, hard lines running out of it that are actually, you know, filled with wires and not filled with oil. I think that could look pretty clean. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about where I can hide my wiring. What do you think of the build so far? Um, yeah, and uh, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and stick around for the next one. So. Yeah.